Midnight greetings. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be going over a color combinations guide, which has been something that has been requested on this channel. So yeah, we're going to go over how to kind of decide color combinations for your V Rising castle. So here we're going to go through, as you can see, every single color available on the color wheel, and we're going to see how we can put things together. So we're going to start off with a classic red. For this example, we're going to use the red walls. Maybe we're going to use a, uh, oh, by the way, you can ignore this carpet here. This carpet is uh, just so I remember what color is each one. This isn't actually part of the build. So just want to put that aside. And yeah, we're going to continue. So maybe I want to use a flooring that is a little bit darker. We could go with something like this. I'm thinking we could use maybe some paintings. A really good painting to use for these uh, red walls, I think, are ones like this one. So this Baroness uh, Hardredge, oh, sorry, Baroness Hardedge, Hard, Hard, Hardedge. I think I said their name right. <laughs> uh, this painting is really good for that because the background of it is red and I think it kind of uh, kind of just blends in with the background in a way that's not too um it's not too much but still holds a lot of good uh good balance especially since the frame is likely to be an opposite color or a different contrasting color so uh, i'm also going to find another painting that i think is really good for this uh one of my favorite paintings in the game is waltz and the waltz painting is also really good because you have the red ribbons here and not only that but the background is also like a warm uh almost like an orangey like pinkish kind of red almost and it just kind of flows well and really nicely with the background now because of this wallpaper having a um now because of this wallpaper having a uh kind of like a gold trim to it we could go with like a brown or like a goldish color but the gold doesn't quite fit um but yeah i think we're gonna go with the uh either we could go with either brown to kind of blend in or i would recommend maybe using a contrasting color like the default uh because the default silver is similar enough to this here to kind of fit the frame and kind of do okay against this color especially because there's a dividing line in the center that is also a darker color than this bottom trim so yeah that's something to think about so if we want to add some furniture here we definitely could um we can add maybe something like this uh sofa here maybe in red you could also go with red red has a really good combination with colors like like white or with uh black because those two colors are a very strong contrast against the red but not so much so that it's kind of uh standing out too much but yeah i think with like red you could definitely rock uh red with like a nice black combination uh i wouldn't use colors like pink i think pink doesn't quite fit and neither does purple it's very uh harsh against this red so maybe i would stick to colors um well, I guess yellow could work. Maybe like an orangey yellow could work. Maybe an orange color. Um, yellow, maybe not so much. Yellow is a little too bright there. Uh, you could also use a dark green color. Now, uh, with this green, we have two different kinds. We have one that's more of like a pale green. And then we have one that's like a kind of like a neon green. I think the pale green one looks a little bit better here. But even then, I would be cautious um especially with this uh cordial sofa now there's better sofas to use for this so maybe if we use like a dark green on like something like a uh like this distinguished divan and i think the distinguished divan is a good sofa to use for this as well as like maybe something like um well i guess you could use something like this the um distinguished sofa these two sofas are probably best to use if you're going to use green to contrast against the red if you want to go with a green and reddish theme but of course you know that's just one example so that's the kind of stuff i'm going to be thinking about or talking about as i go through this example uh we're not going to build like anything huge or anything that's like totally finished i don't think but i just wanted to kind of help you guys uh come up with the idea of what you should do 
uh, in order to kind of spice up your castle a little bit without creating a color combination that doesn't quite work. So if you notice here with the Distinguished Devon, I can switch this over to gold and now it actually fits a little bit better with the furniture. So that's why a lot of times I don't decide my frame colors or my plant uh, potting plant colors until I'm done with the furniture itself because if you put down the furniture first, then you'll know what accented colors you need to be looking at. So in this example, you know, this uh, Distinguished Devon has some gold trim to it. So we wanna choose a gold frame to match the couch. So yeah, we're gonna move on to the next example. For the next example, we're going to be using orange. Now, orange is a very strong color in the sense that it's bright, but it also has uh, a nice, rich feel to it so there's a lot of things you can do with orange and i think something that i like to do is maybe put out or change a wall to be maybe like a windowed wall we can do something like this where uh maybe we have some curtains so we're gonna add some wall ornaments here maybe we'll add a basic orange curtain and of course you're probably wondering what kind of wallpaper would i want to use for this now because the orange is so bright, having a light colored floor probably isn't the answer unless the walls are super dark. So in this example, I'm going to probably go with a wooden wallpaper. So maybe something like this, uh, like these panels here. So if we go with these wooden panels, this kind of stands out against the dark um, background so maybe using a darker wallpaper is a good idea when using something like an orange uh, an orange like curtain or something like that because you want it to stand out so um, like another good example would be the exterior royal walls if you use the exterior royal walls your orange carpet will just pop against uh, the wall and then because the wall is so dark it'll pop against this library flooring that I have placed here. I'm not going to change the flooring for this example but I think you get the idea you know a high contrast situation is usually what you want to go for uh, with these bright colors. Now the same will go for yellow. Yellow is kind of a similar situation. Now the cool thing about yellow is that because it's such a bright color you can kind of change the feel of a room to make it a little bit more uh, rich and inviting. So I could use something that is like very dark or I could use something that's like very light here. It really doesn't quite matter. Um, but what I would say is that if you want to create something that would fit with yellow, uh, I would maybe stick to something like these uh, workshop walls. I think the workshop walls work really well with it. Um, I think anything with like a wooden feel to it is definitely a pretty solid choice for yellow. So let's go with um, maybe some wall ornaments here. We could go maybe with some orderly wall draperies. We can go with the yellow ones and just see how that stands against that. Now notice that these colors are kind of similar to each other. So the brown here has a nice um, kind of like a rich uh, brown and then on the wall we have you know, a dark, you know, kind of like a deeper brown. And of course, with the orange draperies, it definitely kind of stands out so that you're able to kind of visually see it a lot better. Um, I would also be careful about using certain types of furniture items when you're dealing with yellow, especially stuff like these planted vases. I feel like these vases, they do not look yellow. So if I wanted to match that yellow, I would actually have to use orange to match the yellow draperies here. And yeah, this is not a joke. This is actually yellow. And then this would be orange. So keep in mind that just because your items look fine, like certain items look fine on the wall as a certain color, doesn't mean that it'll translate to an object to look similar like that. So I wanted to point out this example specifically so that you guys could kind of get a taste for that. Now, remember, if I were to go with yellow, it would clash immediately. You know, it's too bright. It doesn't fit the floor. It stands out like a sore thumb. But if I were to use orange, it just blends right in. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. For the next example, we're going to use green. One of my favorite, 
favorite things to do with the green is to use the plain stone wallpaper. I really, really, really like this wallpaper for green. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just a personal preference or something that I just, you know, grown to love, but for whatever reason, I've really, really liked to use this particular um, plain stone wallpaper in order to kind of achieve what I want. And uh, because there's two different colored greens, we're gonna start with the dark green here, of course. And we could work with windows. So maybe we'll have a glass window, like the Plague Sanctum window, for example. But then you can put like maybe a green wall ornament. And maybe we wanna go with something like this uh, cordial window drapery, and we could use you know, of course, the green. Now, this green is really, really hard to see when you're using the cordial window drapery. So maybe use like a lighter green here, uh, actually, for like the windows. If you're going to contrast it or try to make it stand out against something like this, uh, we could use a different kind of glass window. So maybe something kind of like this gothic colored glass window. You notice this dark green. Um, kind of like super rich dark green here and if I were to mess with the curtains and make that like a dark green you almost can't see that it's green it almost looks black so be very very careful about what you're doing here I would recommend maybe using something like uh you could use a white or a even like a black just to commit to the darkness of the color um, you could also go with something like a purple. The purple is a nice contrast against these colors. It kind of has a cool, almost like october -y, like Halloween-y feel to it. Something about the purple and green combination just really, really looks nice. Um, you could also, well, actually, I'm going to show a few more examples of this here. So if I wanted to go and add maybe some pillar ornaments and maybe I wanted to add some flags, I could have, you know, maybe some purple flags here and then a green uh, wall ornament in the center here. So if I wanted to go with this and then I use that dark green and it would just look kind of interesting. You have a nice contrast there and I really, really like this wallpaper. Now, if I wanted to change the wallpaper and I had to choose something else, I'm not quite sure what I'd choose. I'd say maybe something that is a little bit highly textured would be a good call so maybe something like these uh inner sanctum walls might not be a bad idea you know just something that's very very detailed on the actual wall itself uh even this wooden one sorry not that one even this wooden one might not be a bad idea or something like uh this uh you know wall panel that's like the entire wall panel is just green like something like that might not be a bad idea and in this case uh this would be a good example of why you would maybe want to use something like purple to kind of counterbalance that green so that it pops a little bit and there's a little bit of contrast so this could be a really really cool situation so in a way we've kind of mirrored uh this window setup with this particular uh layout because remember we have the nice window draperies here and then we have the curtain here uh, which is also purple so if you're gonna do something with green i highly recommend using like either like a purple or i've also seen some people kind of use orange because orange does stand out a lot against the green so if you want to do uh, like a green and orange uh, setup or something you could definitely do that um white could also be a good color to use against the green because the green is so dark and of course maybe for the foundation we, you could use something like this which is the worn old boards uh to kind of neutralize the color because the green is so um distinct from the wall so maybe you want it to stand out a little bit but without you know making the floor too busy with a really high contrast wall build i usually try to go with something a little bit more toned down for the flooring so that it's not overwhelming uh the room and its style all right for this next example, we're going to be using the lighter colored green. And of course, the lighter colored green is always really nice to use. Um, I tend to use it in very, very specific situations, but it doesn't always work out depending on where your castle is located, what direction it's facing, when it's, you know, getting hit by the sun or even just the weather conditions outside. So you have to be really careful about this color. I'd say it's closer to the mounted chemical lights as far as colors go. But if you look at the lanterns and stuff, for example, like these Balefire sconces, if I use the light green, it uh, matches the, you know, um, 
it matches the mounted chemical lights. Now, the mounted chemical lights can be a really good addition to your castle. Um, I like to use them in more outdoor-ish areas because the green kind of makes the grass pop a little bit if you're going to use green grass or hedges or something like that. Um, and also because this is kind of lower to the ground, it also kind of, you know, lights up the area immediately around it. So maybe adding tables and chairs here is not a bad idea. Uh, as far as wallpapers go with this kind of thing, I think that the prison stone walls is not a bad pick because it's highly textured. It's kind of going back to that idea that I said earlier that, you know, when you're using like a, a color that is as, you know, that stands out the way that green does, uh, using like a very textured wall but a really low-key floor might not be a bad idea um if i wanted to choose a flooring that could work for this maybe something more like the sigil pattern for the yeah there we go so i'd say maybe the the uh forge flooring might be a good pick for this color um especially if you're doing uh walkway areas in like a basement kind of thing or like a tunnel or corridor uh but yeah i really like to use this color for like corridors and passageways and things like that all right for this next example we're going to have the light blue set up now the light blue is kind of interesting because it doesn't really have an easy um color to match with now you'll see what i mean when i start adding furniture but we're going to start off with the walls so with the walls here we might go with something like um maybe some ancient symphony walls or something we could go with a gate here um so maybe we're gonna put down let's do that let's add a gate we're gonna add the ancient symphony gate and maybe we want to use a blue a uh, lantern of some kind maybe you know the light blue lantern and of course it kind of gives this uh almost mysterious outdoor feel to it so if you're going to do something like this i recommend either adding well you can add uh more pieces of the ancient symphony set so if you want to use like this color uh this blue with that it's not a bad idea um for the carpet, I would say maybe add, uh, like for example, if you're gonna go with the distinguished carpets and you're gonna go with that light blue color, maybe go with something that is really bright on the ground rather than a darker color. I feel like a darker color doesn't really work as well with this particular carpet. So I'll actually demonstrate real quick. So if we're going to uh, switch out the foundation, right? And we're gonna go with maybe something like that, uh, darker color it just kind of blends in in a way that's not really it, it doesn't really provide value i don't think so you want to kind of keep that in mind when you're building stuff um you could go with something like this but it's a little more detailed it's a little too much for this color so uh my recommendation would be if you're going to use this light colored blue maybe go with something that is a little bit more low-key on the ground so even something just like this would still look better uh, because there is a contrast like a high contrast between the two colors because you want that carpet to stand out you don't want it to just bleed into the floor and then you know it, it doesn't really have that same uh feel to it that you're maybe looking for so yeah that would be um a good one to pick i think a decent other choice might be something like the catacomb pattern because the catacomb pattern for the prison sorry not prison that is the crypt flooring right so if you want to use like the crypt flooring uh any of the crypt flooring is probably a good idea because it's still like lighter and less um it, and it doesn't really um draw the eye away too much so maybe something like a crypt flooring or a um maybe like a wood that isn't so dark you know, maybe like a light colored wood pattern or something would work better against this uh, carpet. Now, I'm not saying to use this wood with this wall, but I'm just kind of trying to show like an example of how the carpets from this color, uh, you know, you could do like a high contrast kind of setup. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, the next one on this list, we're going to go through the dark blue. Now, dark blue is kind of nice because you can do a lot with it. You can, uh, in this example, we, we're going to use a cobalt floor carpet. And we're gonna maybe use a um, this curtain. We're gonna go with like a fancy dark blue curtain. And this wall, uh, this wallpaper 
is not really, as you can see, kind of not really doing anything for this particular, um, for this particular color. So we can change that. And I think a, the best way to probably change that, the best way to probably change that would be to go and either, well, actually I would go with maybe the elegant stone. So that's like the white brick. That way you have a really, really high contrast between this dark blue. And, you know, if you're using like a blue flooring like this one, uh, you have a really, really high contrast between those colors. Now, something to keep in mind is that if you're going to add something like a, um, a vase to this, right? So maybe I'm going to go with a dark blue vase. Maybe we're going to use something like this. Um, it can stand out really, really well against the wall, but if you're going to do that, just be careful that you're not, um, putting too many blue things around it that too close because then you lose the shapes you lose the visual thing that draws your eye to the center of the area so um a good example of this would be like if i'm going to the furniture and maybe i'm adding a sofa maybe something like this um distinguished divan which I, oh actually no let's use the omen sofa for this one if we're going to use an omen sofa and we're going to make it blue um, you know, it kind of, you know, blends in a little too much with the background. And this would be one of those examples where maybe adding, uh, maybe like a black might not be a bad idea. Or if you're going to go with like a white, you could in theory. Um, but yeah, just be careful that if you're going to use blue, that you don't add too many things around it that are also blue in close proximity, especially if they're large objects, because then it just bleeds together. So like this right here, it just kind of looks messy. It just bleeds together. Um, now, if I use the light blue, obviously that's not going to work. Um, but yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. If I was going to do something like this, I would probably add a carpet that's maybe a different color. So maybe I would add something like a white carpet for this particular example, just to make it all stand out. So you notice how this doesn't bleed in as much all of a sudden because there's a white carpet underneath. So that's something to think about when you're using the dark version of blue. Next, we're going to work with purple. Now, I absolutely love purple. I think it's a great color for a lot of these builds. Um, something that I think would be a good thing to work on or kind of show would be if like, let's say you're going with uh, some statues, right? I think a good example would be something like a statue in one of my throne room builds that I really liked where I use these gargoyles. I use the uh, eldest leading gargoyle. That's what this item is called and i use the dark versions of it because there's there's the dark and light versions you have the uh, granite alabaster and then black marble versions so if you use the black marble version uh, it definitely fits really well uh, you could also um, use certain types of lighting i think purple lights are one of those lights that just really really stands out for things like braziers so if you're going to use a brazier you put it here whoops a little off center i'll fix that there we go. Uh, if you notice, the light just shines up into the gargoyle. So if you want to do something like that, that's maybe not a bad idea. Um, as far as the background and wallpapers you could use, uh, maybe something that's a little bit lighter could work. Uh, if you weren't going with this darker feel or if you weren't going with braziers, maybe braziers aren't your thing. Um, you could use kind of like a lighter uh, background like this or if you do want to use that dark background i'd say maybe using exterior royal walls would be an excellent choice here and probably one of my other favorites would be to use the ebonite stone and then you know you can have that purple light kind of uh pushing up against it because normally uh purple would just kind of bleed into the walls but because we're using it here on the braziers it kind of brings it to life so that's just something else to consider now as far as the flooring goes you can use pretty much any flooring you really want with this purple i think the only ones maybe i wouldn't use i actually i don't really like the chevron parquet flooring here this library flooring with this uh with the purple i don't know what it is but to me it just does not work well with the wallpapers that would work best with this color so maybe uh consider you know using a flooring that is either very very light or very very uh dark so like maybe something like this could work 
you know, uh, if you really wanted it to, but it, again, it kind of bleeds into the ground. So, uh, my recommendation would be to use maybe a light colored flooring to have a nice contrast against the purple, unless you had an actual reason for not doing so. So like if it's an outdoor thing, I get it, you know, it makes sense. So yeah, I think uh, those are some great uses for purple or that's something that uh, with purples particularly, I think really is important to know. All right, and for this next example, we're going to be using the color pink as part of our color wheel. Now, this is a little bit different because we do have uh, I mean, we did show many options of similar colors, but pink is a little bit of a different uh, story. It sticks out. It's very uh, in your face as far as it colors go. So I would recommend maybe using the Imperious wall wall panels. Uh, I think the Imperious wall panels are great for this particular color because of the way that it just sticks out and it just looks so rich against the um, against the walls. Uh, so maybe a light colored wall would not be the worst of ideas. You could also do something like this uh, stately stone, uh, which would also be a good idea. Potentially you could use, um, let's say I'm going to go with the royal pattern floor, or if I wanted to go with something, even just the basic stuff. I mean, you can do all types of stuff with um, pink. I think maybe something that I really like is maybe the refraction patterns. You could use like kind of like jewelry flooring and then maybe add pink in as like the uh, mediator for the color transition. So you see how like the floor is kind of like a light charcoalish color, but then the wall is more of like that white marbly feel. Uh, if you add pink to it, then all of a sudden you have a little bit more character, a little bit more life to the room. So I'm going to show an example. Uh, let's go with a carpet and maybe we're going to actually, you know what? Let's use a rug. Let's use a rug for this example. We're going to go with a pink rug. Maybe something like this. And as you can see, the rug kind of stands out a little bit. Um, you can't, unfortunately, you can't like squish the rug all the way into that area. But assuming that this is like part of a larger room, you know, it still kind of gets to the point. Um, but yeah, like a pink carpet like this could work. Maybe we want to go with like a more um, low key pattern. You could try and dampen the pink by uh, using smaller rugs like these. That is also a decent option. Um, granted, you know, you want to center them as probably better than I did just now, but that's okay. And maybe we want to add some cool colors. So maybe we want to go with something like this uh, Distinguished Devon. We can go with the pink. The pink really, really stands out. Um, but because the pink on this particular sofa looks kind of like a diluted grape color, I would say it's not really like pink pink. You kind of have to be careful about the colors you use. That's why I chose this round rug. It dampens the color and dilutes the color enough so that the couch doesn't clash too much from the carpet. So I think that that works really well. Um, so yeah, that that could work. You could also put down, let's say we want to use some curtains, right? Uh, maybe we want to go with a pink curtain or something like that. You know, pink curtains could work well. Uh, if we're working on things like uh, paintings, right? Uh, using like nice round shapes is also not a terrible idea for this particular thing. You could also go with um, maybe like a wooden uh, round circle or something like for your uh, frames for your paintings. If you're going to go with something like that, um, you could, if you wanted to go with like a black to go against that. But I mean, it's really, it's really tough to work with this pink because every object that's pink has like a different kind of pink. So for example, you know, this actually, I'm going to remove this. So for example, this, uh, wall ornament here, if I were to compare it to something like this, you know, they're both the same, right? Like it's kind of bright, but it's the same. You know, if you go with uh, something like this, you know, oh, sorry about that. If you go with something like this, you know, it's bright, but it's, it's a high contrast against the pink sofa. So I would say if you're going to use pink furniture, be very careful about the uh, wall ornaments you use because a lot of times the wall ornaments do 
do not match well with that. So I'm just going to show like a quick example if I use uh, maybe this pink uh, sofa here and maybe I wanted to do something like have a um, maybe like a flower plant or something like a flower pot. I could put down a vase. Uh, you can maybe go with something that's a little bit more, uh, I guess the, let me see if that would work. You could use this peach color, um, to work against this, like, sofa, because it's not as, like, it's not very high contrast. It almost looks kind of brown, even though the color says peach. So maybe use something like this if you're going to place down uh, or uh, some vases. Uh, you could also put down maybe, you know, uh, actually green is not a bad contrast against the pink because it kind of brings it back down to an earthy tone. But, you know, there, there's a lot of different things you could do with pink, but just be very careful. Um, if I had to recommend maybe a... Um, item to put on the wall i mean it's kind of a tough choice maybe something like this painting here might not be a bad idea um you could go with that and then just add like a you know kind of an accent or even if you want to change up this wall so if you want the wall to be uh, a different wallpaper you can but you know just in just in general i would say that if you're going to use the color pink be very careful about the color matching because from object to object it can vary greatly so uh that example of using that like peach color for like vases you know instead of using a pink you know that's just something to consider uh if we were to use the pink vase the pink vase would look something like this and as you can see this pink is not the same as this pink i would argue that this pink is probably closer to the wall ornaments that we saw earlier so if i put this back up you know this see like none of these pinks are really quite the same so just be very very careful about what you choose here especially when you're choosing what kind of seating you want so if you really want to go wild with your pink colors i would just maybe even consider not using any of these sofas because the colors just do not um do not align i mean if you're going to use something like this uh cordial sofa though uh, the cordial sofa maybe isn't as bad. It's a little bit lighter in color. I would say the cordial sofa is probably the best one uh, to use out of these couches. Because uh, if you notice, these two kind of align more. Uh, and none of these match the wall draperies. So that's something that drives me absolutely insane. So be very careful if you're going to use pink. All right. So for the next example, we're going to use a uh, white as our color so white is definitely very very nice to work with um a lot of times when i add uh wall ornaments or something and let's say i'm going to use white as my color uh i tend to go with a dark wallpaper just to contrast so uh maybe we want to go with something like a uh we can go with a wooden wallpaper a wooden wallpaper works really really nicely with the white because it's dark enough to have a nice contrast you could also use a red wall with white very very high contrast also really nice looking um let's see the exterior uh royal walls are also a decent option and then if we go back to maybe like the panels with the decorative pattern that could work uh, for the brown or if you want to go with like a workshop wallpaper you can so white is very very versatile and uh, you can use it for a ton of different things and you know of course the ebonite stone works really well against it also now if you're going to use white as your as something that is on your wall panels you could Maybe uh, choose darker furniture, like black furniture to go along with it. Um, if you're going to use a white uh, carpet though, you might want a dark flooring. So uh, for this example, I'm gonna use a white, oh, that was a mistake. We're gonna use a white flooring here for this example. And as you can see, uh, the floor kind of sucks in the white a little too much. So we're going to have to choose a darker foundation. Maybe we want to go with something, um, something like an, uh, like an, a gray or charcoal-y color. It's probably pretty good against the white. It's not too much of a contrast, but it's also, 
um, just different enough to kind of make it pop a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can also just use the darkest uh, flooring, which I mean, is not that great against this. Um, if you're going to use maybe a wooden floor, you could use something like the uh, like this diamond kind of pattern here for the flooring if you want to use something else for the wall, like a different wallpaper. Or you can even, um, if you're going to do something with like maybe red and white, you could use like a white floor to contrast against the red. Um, but yeah, you can, you can also do things like you can alternate colors with black and white and use, you know, that color a lot. So, um, maybe what I would recommend if you're going to use white in your castle, if you're going to use white on walls, use a high contrast wall. If you're going to use white on the ground, use a high contrast ground. But if you're only using one on either or, um, make the furniture dark and leave the flooring light if you're going to do that. So that's something to consider. Now, last, almost last, not quite last, we have this charcoal uh, color, like kind of like a dark uh, gray kind of charcoaly color here. We're going to see what this looks like with the things like the omen sofa. So if we go with this omen sofa, uh, it kind of has a nice little gray to it. If you're going to do something like that, I would recommend maybe having another um, more extreme colored wall. So something like a, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe like a white. You could have like a white against that. Or uh, actually, white doesn't look as good. Maybe something like a. I'm trying to think what else stands out really well here. Um, there's not really a lot of good options. <clears throat> there's not really a lot of good options for this gray, but you could just use it with you know a background that's maybe not as forgiving. Um, I feel like gray bleeds into a lot of the furniture, so it's really hard to pick something that's not going to completely engulf it. Um, but if we use, like, for example, the Haunted Nights wall decor, now I, re I realize a lot of you probably don't have this if you're on PS5. Um, I don't know if they're going to release that pack for PS5 uh, around Halloween time. That's usually around the time that, you know, they released this initially. Um, so that's something to kind of think about. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't use a dark colored wall per se, unless it's like a different kind of material. So um, wood can kind of work a little bit against this, but you have to be careful. White even looks kind of weird. Um, you could go with something that kind of bleeds in even more. But, you know, like I said, maybe choose a wall pattern that is highly textured. Um, if you're going to use gray, because the gray just kind of bleeds into every color. Uh, and it's really, really hard to um, kind of work with that. So let's say I'm going to use a carpet and maybe the carpet is going to have, I don't know, um, maybe like a gray. If you want a gray carpet, maybe use a light colored flooring because the gray is really close to black. Um, if you're going to use maybe like a rug or something, like maybe something like this. You know, this might not be a bad idea. Um, it kind of gets eaten by other colors, though. So just keep in mind that if you're going to use gray on anything uh, that is not like physical, like the regular furniture, like if you're going to use it on a rug or a vase or something like that, chances are your colors are just going to melt right into it. So be careful. Um, I'm not really sure what I would recommend doing for this color just because it's so hard to work with um so this one is gray but like it doesn't look gray you see so it, it just be careful with you know your color combinations because you don't want everything just kind of bleeding into each other i would probably avoid using this sofa specifically uh just because of how much it bled into the wall there um but if i were to use something like a maybe something like this you know, if you notice, this gray is a little bit different from this gray. Like, it's not quite the same color. So just keep in mind, if you don't want to use a black, but you want to use something dark, you can always use a gray. Just, I would recommend maybe staying away from this particular sofa with the gray. So be careful. 
all right so last but not least we have black and of course with black we have lots of great options we could use um something i like to do uh with the black is either have a high contrast floor or high contrast wall uh not usually both so in this case we're gonna go with maybe like a rich floor uh maybe the wall paper is going to be something like this um you know this white here and then we can put down maybe some black draperies so maybe we want to use the cordial wall draperies we can go with a black and you can see immediately it just boom it stands out it pops immediately to the eye um so you have to kind of be a little bit careful about some of your builds because if you're going to use white and black as your foundational colors it kind of you have to be very careful about what other colors you use because for example like the ground here like we don't really have um anything that fits a like dark color per se so like this is probably the darkest uh flooring we have which is really a shame because i think this used to be darker before the 1.0 change and i wish that they would just kind of bring it back and make it dark again uh because i don't feel like it's really serving its purpose of course if you're going to use black you could um like let's say for example we wanted to change it up a little bit maybe we want the walls to be black right so we could go with a wallpaper like the uh maybe the exterior royal walls again right black against black like this example here i would say maybe try to choose items to lighten up the area so maybe go with a pillar mounted light and if we go with a pillar mounted light and we choose maybe something like a white for example it kind of makes the um the wall look a lot more textured and it kind of you know it allows you to work with only black without it looking too stale and and just like a black blob so you know if you're going to use black against black maybe use a white light is what i would use uh just to kind of you know have that nice contrast another good example would be is if you took like a brazier and maybe you want the brazier to be white here you know that could light up the area as well so let's say i didn't want these right you know if you want to create like maybe a dark atmosphere in the room that still has like a like royal feel without it being too much of a dark blob i highly recommend uh using like a white light or a white brazier in order to contrast that so that's something to think about um as you're going forward now for this flooring maybe i would want to use something that's a little bit higher contrast i know i use this flooring a lot but i really really like it this um library flooring and then we could take a carpet like this one for example and we can add a black carpet to it and all of a sudden now you have a high contrast situation where the flooring is like you know maybe a lighter color and it kind of adds a different feel to the entire room so yeah that's something that uh you know hopefully that is very helpful to you so that's something to think about and also if you're going to use black furniture make sure you have white lighting around it so that it's illuminated enough that it doesn't bleed in too much with the background so that's something to uh consider so yeah what did you think of this guide did you learn anything today did you find anything about it useful i mean i tried my best uh with color combinations and stuff like that i'm not an artist or anything by any means but i definitely want to kind of show you guys some of my thought process when I'm decorating and why I choose certain colors or why I wouldn't choose other colors and I do break the rules from time to time depending on the circumstances if I find the right kind of flooring or the right kind of setup so yeah uh, I hope that this helps some of you guys who have been asking me for a color guide and uh yeah thank you so much for those of you who don't know my name is sholo q i'm a sholo eats quaintly reaper and guide to the underworld i stream three times a week on twitch kick and youtube and usually i play v rising on wednesdays feel free to stop by and say hello if you like the video leave a like share and subscribe and as always sholo out